really like surgery. I love it to this, to this day. Within two or three hours, you can change a person for the rest of his life. I'm good with my hands. I was good at model airplanes. So I knew once I became a doctor, it was gonna be surgery. It's very interesting to, to work with someone who's had Dr. Collis' experience. I realized that I was the only one of the immediate family. There was eight first cousins that grew up together there in Kentucky. And I was the only one that hadn't served in the military. So I called Bethesda, that's where they selected doctors and placed them told them I wanted to serve, and they said they didn't need any doctors. So I didn't like that. I said, I want to speak to the person in charge. Well, sure enough, I got a hold of a colonel who selected and placed uh, doctors in various hospitals, military hospitals. He said he never had a doctor who insisted on serving before. Uh, there was a large hospital on the West Coast, and then there was a hospital in Honolulu. That's when I uh, saw my interest, incidentally, for spine surgery. I did all the cranial work, the head trauma, but I went around to all the areas where the uh, soldiers and so on, sailors, all the services, were first seen, told them I was going to be on the island, I was a specialist. If there was any spinal problems, I always emphasize the spinal problems, just call me. Well, there wasn't many military surgeons, as I saw it, that were looking for work. Well, I was looking, and I found it. And uh, I haven't stopped looking to this day. I started working for Dr. Collis on February 1 of 1965. Little did I know we would have quite a journey 400,000 patients later. He uh, obviously grew up in neurosurgery before we had the imaging we have now. Uh, so um, a CT scan, MRI scan, and he saw the great potential for this. Dr. Collis is a recognized expert in the field of neurosurgery and a pioneer. And Dr. Collis is always placed as a top priority to make sure that his patients receive state-of-the-art healthcare services with a focus on excellent outcomes and patient satisfaction. We used to have one size fits all for retractors. And a retractor would be too deep for some, not deep enough for others. So I went to a friend who's a machine maker I had a nice frame, and then I started making different length blades and different width blades. I think I'm the first to do that. I have known about Dr. Collis since coming to med school in 1982 to Cleveland, and so his name has always been part of the Cleveland fabric in terms of spinal uh, surgery. Every patient I've ever treated up to this day gets a copy of all my thoughts and actions, a complete record on their, we call that the history and the exam and any test, and it's been explained. So I can summarize it very quickly and the patient gets a copy of that. At the time that was unheard of. And all along the way I had people who tried to discourage that. But when I say why, I never got a straight answer, it's sort of stupid answer in my opinion. But you know, I've seen boys from the Army come and see me 20, 30 years later. What's the first thing they pull out? That little discharge summary. We had physicians from all over the world come to, to visit um, us to see what's going on and what, the, what this new way of treating uh, uh, spinal deformities and spinal conditions was. Uh, it was very exciting times. I can almost tell when the phone rings and he starts out a conversation where that conversation is going and what he will need. And I'm only so happy to, to be of service. Over the years working with Dr. Collis, I have witnessed how loved he is by his patients. 
because they know that the quality of care is unparalleled. Dr. Collis has operated on thousands upon thousands upon thousands of patients, including me. And as a former patient, I'm sure that all those patients he operated on, like me, are very grateful for the way he improved the quality of our lives. I'd say the aspects of uh, spinal surgery that I have perhaps started, certainly contributed to, uh, is geared about safety for the patient. Um, when I was in the military, there were so many infections. Had closed hospital for a week. I looked into infections. I read the world literature on infections. From that time on, the first thing I started, and I do to this day, is that the patient who's headed for surgery the night before gives himself a shampoo and a total body wash. We used to call that the septicol, that was a medicine, a soap, the septicol shampoo and shower. And we did it the next morning before surgery. Um, the second thing I did as a result of my study and those two terrible cases I had, the infections, um, was the use of antibiotics. Um, everyone used antibiotics after you had an infection, but after you had the infection, the antibiotics almost can't get to the abscess. You have to open that abscess, drain it, then the antibiotics can get to it. So I reason why not have those antibiotics in you before you start the surgery. When I started that, I can't get over how many people came down on me. Uh, appropriately, appropriately. Excessive use of antibiotics. You're gonna make the bugs resistant. Well, I came back by saying, I wanna kill the bugs. I don't wanna make them resistant. What is the risk of an antibiotic? It's, it's low, low, low. What's the, what's the um, possibilities of an infection. It can, it can take a person's life. Um, so now, I don't think there's any surgeon in this country who does spinal surgery without pre-operative antibiotics. So I'm very proud of that. To come to it before the imaging, before all the advances, and, real, and take, um, uh, take his past experience, what worked, what didn't work, putting it together with the new information he has, and now taking that, both the, the clinical experience and the new advances in, in imaging, and new advances in anesthesia, and new advances in spinal instrumentation, and applying it to the problems that he wasn't able to solve previously, um, it, it kept, it, it, it was very exciting, and it still remains exciting uh, for, for Dr. Collis to, to solve problems. That's what we like to do. I've done about 16,000 major cases. 5,000 of those have been fusions. Those are the complicated cases. Nobody believes me when I say I've never had my first infection in all those fusions. Now, the only people that do believe me is the hospital because they've never seen one. I'm not sure I'd believe anybody if they said they did 5,000 fusions with no infections, but I think the preparation of the body physically, uh, the antibiotics, and then the last thing I do that more and more people are doing, I leave a drain in the wound. And now they have very sophisticated, neat drains. I used to leave actually a, a piece of rubber coming out of the incision. It would drain overnight and then I'd take this out and put a stitch in. Now we have ways to drain deep through a needle that comes out and it's self-sealing. It's wonderful and it's painless. I think it's important for young surgeons uh, coming into the practice of, of uh, surgery to remember the importance of talking to the patient eye to eye. And that's something that Dr. Collis uh, exemplifies. Um, making sure that there is a conversation rather than his will be done. When I think of uh, 
helping surgeons learn what I am familiar with. I start with pointing out that I look at patients like they're family. And I don't mean to sound corny when I say that I think every religion has this slogan, perhaps. As a Christian, we call it the golden rule, but it, it's a slogan in all religions to treat others the way you would want to be treated. When you first say that, they kind of smile. And when I realize, when they realize that I'm serious and I don't smile back, um, I like to tell them about a television show. It was a movie made into a television show that really illustrates what I want in my operating room environment. There was that very funny show, MASH. Doctors that were horsing around, kidding their patients, uh, dating the nurses uh, virtually in the operating room half the time. It was all pretty funny. It was noisy uh, and funny. Now, my environment is more like church, and I mean the old-fashioned church. Let's say a Catholic mass, the old-fashioned, not with the music as some masses have now. I want it quite. At the mass, we're focused on the Eucharist. We're focused on God. In the operating room, I want them focused on that patient. Nobody had better say who's on call when they're working with me. That means you're not focused. That's one of the things I tell all my assistants. I want them focused. I want them careful. I want them alert. I want them prepared. Dr. Collis has been able to um, be the, the steady hand uh, for, for a group and uh, leads by example. And uh, everybody sort of um, takes on the culture of the leader. And so it's a very, very nice environment to, to have Dr. Collis as your partner and colleague. In addition to being a consummate professional, Dr. Collis is a man of great faith. And he lives his deep religious conviction every day. Um, no matter who you are, he treats everyone with the utmost respect and compassion. He's a very dignified and calm leader, and that's the style that everyone should try to emulate. There's a reason why he's been able to work as long as he has. Um, I should have learned a, a little bit earlier. We've got to be careful that we're not operating on the x-ray or operating on the MRI scan. We're, we're dealing with the patient's problem. And uh, uh, sometimes the most obvious thing on an MRI scan doesn't explain what, what the patient's telling you. And he's, uh, he's a master at that. He loves you know, the challenge of seeing a new patient, helping a new patient, deciding what they need, uh, referring the patient then on to one of his colleagues for surgery. When I'm asked about the environment that we work at at St. Vincent, um, team effort is the first thing that comes to mind. Again, I go back to the training program. Everything was piecemeal. You had to go here for one. You had to go over here for the blood test, over here for the x-ray. Here at St. Vincent's, it's one package. It, it's that work environment. It's the collegiality. It's knowing that there's somebody to talk with, um, somebody to review a problem with uh, before surgery as well as after surgery. It's a very friendly environment. You know, when I first started to work for Dr. Kels, I was sort of intimidated, totally intimidated. But over the years, that our working relationship has become more relaxed, more fun. He just uh, has a great personality to work with. I think that attitude of trying to do your best, I think that's the attitude that's referred to when I'm asked about the collegiality at St. Vincent's. I think basically it's an area that cares, cares about every patient, each and every patient. 
Dr. Collis, congratulations on a wonderful career and I look forward to many more years of working with you. Thank you so much for your laughter, your um, care, and your caring. Congratulations on this the celebration of your very distinguished career. May God continue to bless you and your family, and I hope to see you soon. Congratulations, Dr. Collis. This is a great day. I have enjoyed my journey with you and wish you the very best in the coming years. Well, John, I just want to congratulate you on a great surgical career. My goal is to, is to, uh, is to uh, continue to, to work as long as you have and enjoy it as much as you have. I can't tell you how much I appreciate our, our friendship, our, our relationship, uh, and uh, the great advice you've given me over these past 30 years. It's very much appreciated.